Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. In today's video, I want to discuss the upcoming revolution taking place in the area of robotics and AI. It appears that over the next few decades, our economy and workforce as we know it today will be drastically changing. And I think over the last few years, we've really noticed this with large companies like Tesla and Amazon and so on, investing heavily in this future for us with higher amounts of automation to lower the prices of their goods and services to the end consumer being us to really help them gain market share as a company. Now, it appears that this um, con uh, inflection point of AI and robotics is going to become exponentially larger over time as uh, things like humanoid robots and robots in general uh, really start replacing people from the workforce and creating a more efficient marketplace, but also taking away jobs from people as a whole. And I think that this will be both uh, positive and negative for society as a whole, good in terms of uh, decreasing the price to the end consumer, but bad in terms of people possibly not having a purpose anymore when it comes to contributing to society as a whole. And we're really at a, a moment that we've never been before, or at least in the future we will be, where we find ourselves not needing to contribute to society anymore, at least not as much, in order to get by. And I think that this video will put together a few, we'll put together a few key statistics, we'll look at some numbers to really understand what this could all mean. And I wanna kick that off with looking at humanoid robots which I think Tesla and a few other companies are really uh, gearing towards heavily in, in terms of investing in and in ways um, that they could potentially profit on in the future as well. Um, when it comes to humanoid robots, we are on the verge of revolutionizing the global workforce. With advancements in artificial intelligence, automation, and robotics, these machines could soon take over nearly every job that exists. Unlike human workers, humanoid robots do not demand salaries, benefits, or breaks, and they can work 24-7 uh, with minimal maintenance. And I don't think uh, people fully comprehend the, this, and I think businesses uh, are definitely going to push for this. Imagine you own a business or a product service uh, that you make, and you can automate to that product or service to greatly reduce the price and increase your market share. And whichever uh, company or person implements this first uh, can uh, beat out their competitors, right? So over time, it appears that this might be an inevitable change coming our way uh, simply due to economics and things as such. If you can buy a hamburger made by a person for $5 or a hamburger made by a robot for 50 cents, which one are you going to choose? You're going to choose the hamburger that's probably the same quality, if not higher, that is made by the robot and you're going to pay less for it. And I think that these uh, small concepts, as simple as that example is, is what's going to be taking place uh, in the economy as a whole, but at a much larger scale. Now, if we look at what a human, humanoid robot uh, might look like, at least in terms of the uh, economics of how it might work, compared to a human worker, uh, if we look at humans versus the humanoid robot here on the right chart, right side of the chart is the humanoid robot, middle is the human worker, and over here is all the uh, statistics of what each category is. Um, if we look at the salary of a person versus a humanoid robot, the human the humanoid robot demands a zero dollars to be paid out to them. They don't have a soul. They don't have kids. Uh, they don't have a, a house or anything, a mortgage to pay off. So therefore, they don't need a salary. Um, how many hours per week can a humanoid robot uh, work versus a human? It's going to be drastically more. I don't think a, a robot will work every hour of the week, but it will definitely be a whole lot more. And if we scroll down here and look even farther, they require fewer and fewer benefits. Um, no health care, no PTO or retirement needed for a robot and etc. The productivity is much more, less of an error rate and predictable maintenance, whereas humans can get sick and whatnot. So if we imagine that, uh, let's say you can build a robot for $30,000 and it has a lifespan of five years. Um, and with very minimal maintenance and charging costs, et cetera, assuming it runs on electricity, uh, the comparison to a human will be drastically less in terms of cost long term. So a human over five years uh, between the employer and the worker itself might cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And all that cost needs to be passed on to the consumer in, that, in the price of the good or service of that end product, whatever that might be. 
compared to the humanoid robot, much of that gets erased. They don't need any of that at the end of the day, uh, therefore making it a much more attractive investment for the business owner to buy to replace the human worker. It's not like the business owner uh, dislikes a person or loves them or whatever it is. The, the human simply trades their time to provide the business with their labor to make that end product or service. And the humanoid robot can do exactly the same, but work many more hours per week and cost much less to the business as a whole, which would ultimately help out the investors of that business and the growth of that business relative to the competitor of that business, which relies on human labor. So over time, there's gonna be this forcing function that appears that'll happen with, with uh, robotics that will force this change to occur. Uh, there's really no fighting it at the end of the day. And I do believe that there might be some uh, caveats to that. Maybe uh, the government implements a robot tax, for instance, uh, that might be equivalent to whatever amount of revenue that that company generates uh, to offset the damage done to the human workforce. Because after these robots take the jobs of the people, what do the people do at the end of the day? And where do they get their income if their job and their value is being greatly replaced by the by the humanoid robot. So if we look at sort of like what industries could be uh, fully automated, it really looks like the bulk of every industry. We, we look at manufacturing, fast food and restaurants, retail and customer service and healthcare and et cetera. All these numbers are close to 100% long term in terms of being replaced by robots. And I don't think this will happen any, any time in the next few years. Obviously, the uh, the whole uh, manufacturing of these humanoid robots or et cetera has yet to happen. But over time, we give it a few decades, it appears that this change will be taking place, which really leaves the human worker, uh, the, the regular Joe like you and I, with no labor left for us to produce, which begs the question, how will we be getting our income to pay off our mortgage and so on? Because I, I think some ideas um, that I've heard or, or brought up will be things like universal basic income, uh, which I don't even know where that money would come from as the uh, robots, unless there's a tax or something, it just doesn't make sense. Now, I think that over time, what'll happen here is that, um, there'll have to be some sort of change because if robots take over everything, what will that do to the value of your dollar? Like if the robots control and operate the entire supply chain to make your hamburger or your car, if the robots robots can build themselves, program themselves and maintain themselves, that leaves nowhere for the human being to do any of the work in the market and that leaves the human with no value. They have no competitive edge over the workforce as we're biological creatures and we need to sleep and we have to pay for items unlike the robot. And I often, I've spoken to uh, friends, buddies, family members about this uh, issue in terms of, hey, assuming a robot were to make your hamburger, how much would it cost? Um, what would the human have to do in that scenario? And I think most people think that, oh, well, the humans will have to build the robots and maintain them. Uh, they'll have to be in the workforce somehow, somewhere to help the robot. And again, I really don't see this happening. If a robot can put together a hamburger, a robot can charge another robot. If a robot can make a hamburger, it could probably build a robot as well, etc. It simply has to be programmed and ultimately the AI in, or all the software uh, will be smart enough to own, the, own and operate the entire um, ec economic system. And ultimately, it appears that this will leave a vast abundant abundance in the supply of products and services unlike we've ever seen before. Imagine a world where building, uh, building a home uh, or building a car will cost next to nothing because the entire supply chain is all automated with uh, little to no people at all in it. Um, I do think that the... Uh, the value of land and hard assets will still maintain their value because those can't the the supply of land is very finite right uh, but in a future where things are automated the ability to build on that land and produce on that land is unlimited and robots can go ahead and mine things they can build things they can operate the entire supply chain uh, fully automated and will supply humans with whatever needs that they have 
And if we think about the needs and wants of humans, it's unlimited. People want bigger homes, they want more products and services, they want their life to be as easy as possible with minimal effort. And we've really evolved this way. People are inherently lazy, they want to conserve energy, and in many ways that's how humans evolved. Conserve energy, live longer, uh, burn fewer calories. So uh, I guess that's one uh, perspective to put it in a funny sense. But what will happen here is there will be a massive social disruption. I mean, employment near 0% human employment, wages collapse to near zero for human workers, cost of goods plummet to almost zero, assuming massive automation efficiency, and, drast and um, human homelessness could rise drastically unless some sort of universal basic income is implemented. And this might also create a giant wealth gap as people who invested in these technologies early on or own hard assets like real estate, gold, silver, or whatever, um, see their wealth increase relative to people who are not connected to those assets otherwise, um, such as the people or corporations who own the robots can accumulate the wealth uh, from the people uh, spending their universal basic income for their goods and services. It kind of seems like an economy of the future might be one where we own nothing and we're happy or something like that that we've heard from um, governments across the world or however that might work. Um, but let's look at some of the potential benefits of a robot driven economy. The benefits, cheap goods and services, endless innovation. AI will continue to innovate on itself. It'll probably become smarter than humans over the next few decades, which means it'll start solving more and more of our problems. And I think today we might view the automation as a negative, but overall it seems like AI might outsmart outsmart these problems and create solutions to these very problems I'm talking about today. Uh, there'll be no more uh, uh, dangerous jobs for us and increased time for leisure and whatnot. Maybe that means people have more kids or doing fun things more often or however that might work. It might put more pressure on humans to invest more of their time and effort in these areas like art, education, and creativity without having to worry about work. But we've also seen... Um, like very popular people like Elon Musk and these AI brain nerd guys that uh, uh, continuously talk about merging humans with AI, which is a very controversial topic. Like uh, basically putting a brain chip, putting a brain chip on our brains to merge ourselves and expand our level of intelligence to meet or match that of artificial intelligence. Sort of like if you can't beat it, join it. So over time, we ourselves might have to uh, evolve to keep up with this massive change. Because um, over time, I mean, if we look at the current um, demographics of people, I spoke about this on the last video, uh, but with the declining birth rates, a uh, larger uh, population of older demographics in nations like the United States, especially in the Asian market, Europe, and et cetera, um, that's going to put more pressure on younger people, which means we're going to have to probably force ourselves into an economy that relies more so on uh, artificial intelligence and robotics to help sustain our unlimited wants and needs. It's really just all economics at the end of the day. And I think that over time, what will happen here is that um, basically the world as we know it will change and there will be much uh, more abundance, right? So if you want a new house built by all robots, heck, you could probably just tell a hundred new robots to come into your property, build everything out, all the lumber, uh, roofing, et cetera, et cetera. All the supplies will be delivered um, autonomously built by robots and you could have a new home built for the equivalent of, I don't know, like 10 or $20,000 today that would have otherwise costed hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I've even, like, I've even thought about like, Imagine you have a city like New York or Chicago or et cetera, Detroit, a decaying city that needs needs to be rebuilt. I mean, in the future of robotics and humanoid robots, where labor and the supply of their goods is essentially unlimited, you could rebuild a city in a matter of just a few years. Imagine a city like New York uh, being evacuated of all of its people for two or three years while Robots come in and rebuild it in a futuristic manner that costs very little to uh, people. The robots come in, they demolish the buildings. Um, million robots come in, they rebuild the buildings, and humans move back in a few years later into their nicely fresh, newly minted homes. And this future is kind of dystopian, but also cool at the same time in the sense that 
we will sort of have this magic wand being artificial intelligence working for us to supply us with whatever we want. I mean, sure, I even mentioned um, that land is very scarce, right? That's a hard asset that might hold its value going into the future. But what happens when um, robotics, when humanoid robots or robots in general can just build out an unlimited amount of square footage in a sky high, a sky rise building uh, to supply us with gyms, pools, or golf courses or whatever it is. They could even go subterranean and build massive tunnel systems, underground structures, massive underground structures um, that would have been otherwise impossible with regular human uh, labor. And that's why we're not seeing humans do that sort of work just quite yet because it doesn't make economical sense. Things need to make economical sense for it to work. So if we lower the price of uh, things to be built, uh, innovated on, and et cetera, uh, the possibilities of our infrastructure also becomes uh, drastically wider and more unlimited as well. Um, not exactly sure how this all pans out. It's just a bunch of imagination in the short term, and I love to think about it. And I think over time, uh, that this will drastically change. I mean, imagine a future where we are living with our our brain chips on our brain. Not that that seems cool right now. It seems kind of weird, uh, but we can just map. Uh, uh, magically summon an army of robots using our our uh, brain uh, implants and to control all these robots at a wizard-like way. Um, but over time, I don't know, I don't think that this will be bad super long term as long as we can merge successfully with AI or at least keep up with it and keep it on the good side. We just can't let it get to that sort of Skynet uh, bad guy level, of course, or else everything is over. Uh, but overall, I mean, this just changes everything and it kind of washes away the scare that people might have today with declining birth rates. Because right now, to have a healthy economy, you need a larger, uh, younger workforce to help support the older workforce or the retirees, which rely on their, um, their social security or their um, investments to pay for their lives. In a future where all their... Um, infinite wants and needs can be supplied with robots, uh, that worry goes away, which erases the need to have a larger, small, uh, younger generation to supply that workforce, which we don't know how that will impact the future of people in terms of wanting to have kids and et cetera. We don't know those impacts, and that could be a negative impact of the greater amount of artificial intelligence and robotics taking over longer term. Because right now, how, how the system works is we rely on one another. We need kids. We need uh, culture and a family system to support ourselves. We need household income. Today, you see a husband and wife working to support the kids and make that future happen. And we see kids as assets later on in life to become part of the labor force to make the economy stronger, uh, grow GDP, uh, pay taxes, pay off the national debt, and things like that. And all that appears will be going away longer term. And I'm not sure how we uh, pay off the national debt and things like that with humanoid robots. We don't know how all that pans out. But when you can have a robot work for two bucks an hour when today you have a worker that needs to be paid 25 bu bucks an hour, uh, the, the types of wants and needs of people will change drastically. And, and I don't know how all that'll look like, and I can only sort of conceptualize uh, that future for us. Uh, but I hope that helps you guys out in terms of understanding what the future might look like and a little bit of an imaginary way and some food for a thought. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.